Hello, everyone. So I'd like to, I'm here to talk about how we can promote osteoparticle physics in Brazil and, and in Latin America. Uh, most of my, my my talk will be based on, on my experience in Brazil for obvious reasons. So I'd like to first emphasize to all of you that osteoparticle physics is, is not common in Brazil and Latin America. It's not very popular. And the reason is, it's simply because it's a baby. In abroad in the United States or in Europe, astroparticle physics is a very big area and very relevant. But in Latin America, it's very small. Then we have to know that. And there are historical reasons for this. For instance, in Brazil, the very first session on dark matter physics that happened in the spring meeting or in the high energy physics meeting promoted by the Brazilian Physics Society happened in 2011. So about 11 years ago. So it's a, year, a field that has 11 years of existence, basically recognized in the Brazilian Physics Society, cannot be too popular, right? So 11 years. If you take two years in of pandemic, it's nine years. Nine years of a field is not much. So it's, it's our role if we want, right, to promote this field. And the way to promote this field, in my way, in my humble way of thinking, is by organizing events, either at the high level, scientific level, or at the undergrad level. That's the way how we can really promote and engage students early on in astroparticle physics. All undergrad students, that they are really familiar with astronomy. And if you ask all undergrad students who just started their the their studies, if you ask which field do you think do you think is popular, which field you're interested in, and most of them will say astronomy. Well, because astronomy is common to their daily lives, and is you see on really nice videos on YouTube. You you can really like engage, you know. You you know what's relevant, what are the topics that people talk about, think about and talk about in science and so on. But in astroparticle physics, they think it's just a made up name. Well, it's a made up name <laughs> indeed, but has a meaning, right? And they are not aware of most of the, even my colleagues, my peers, they had no idea what astroparticle physics were before my arrival. So it's, we really have to have that in mind before promoting astroparticle physics. If we just keep organizing very high level scientific events, you will not, never be able to grow as a community. You will always obviously form students and will grow little by little. Once you have PG students, I have PG students, they are already graduated, they finished their thesis. Sure, it will be one and two, three. That's not growing, really growing as a community, a big boost. To have this big boost in also particle physics, either in Latin America or in Brazil in particular, we really we need to promote events at early on. So for undergrad students, they will be aware of the importance of astroparticle physics, what are the topics which are interested in. We are really in a national field, right? So that's very important because there are fields and lines of research in Brazil, which are not really connected to an uh, international agenda. And they are like really small bubbles where people just work with their peers that work in the different state and they are not really trying to solve uh, an important that is relevant for the international community. It's just small collaborations between like inside the bubble. Our community is very different because it was born differently. So having in mind that this community started around 2011, that the very first session, I would say the community started, it started in 2011 because it was the very first session on the uh, on this meeting, high energy physics meeting, promoted by the Brazilian Field Society. But at that time, there were very few people, a handful of people work on something related to dark matter or connected to astroparticle physics. Most of the people who say that I work on astroparticle physics, sure, they do work on astroparticle physics, but it's related to OJ Observatory, where just probing, not just, my, I mean, they are probing cosmic rays, and they are not really worried about the particle phenomenon, you know, the particle physics, like related to beyond the standard model physics or the nature of dark matter. It's just astrophysics 
which sure has some particle physics and interactions involved. But in the context of dark matter, which is what this event is uh, proposing, this I'm talking to the attendees of the real regenerator dark matter meeting. So in this context of dark matter, there I mean not not many. The thing changed when Fabio Yoko arrived at ICTP safer in Sao Paulo and he started promoting events in astroparticle physics. There were other people who were working on already on dark matter, such as uh Ivone Bukeke. She was working on a given uh, drug detection experiments. I, I now I forgot the name, but she was just her. And once Fabio came, he started really organizing events, and that's how we started having a community uh, involvement. And Martin also organized the event, which I participated, which was precisely roughly when I arrived back in Brazil in 2018, which was the Dark Matter Neutrino School and Workshop headed by Martin which will have a second edition 20, next year, 2024, again, headed by Martin. And this was really started growing when Fabio Yoka arrived. And then, and then started promoting events. There are many people who were, start, came, were coming from abroad and working on astroparticle physics. But then, as far as I know, none of them created a route in the country. They all left. So unfortunately, they didn't have many students or they didn't have, they didn't build up groups in Brazil to work on dark matter. So that's unfortunate. And, and then Martin started really getting involved in dark matter from the astroparticle physics point of view. There were other professors from high energy physics, collider physics, such as uh, Vito Gonçalves, Gustavo, Da Silveira. There were other professors who were in the particle physics side and started becoming more astroparticle physicists and are astroparticle physicists. And that becoming, I started having, creating a community, you know. There were also Enrico Bertuzzo in Sao Paulo working on dark matter, neutrino, mostly neutrino, but a, a bit on dark matter connecting to, to dark matter physics in connection to dark matter physics. Does there are still there are few uh, like a handful of people who work on dark matter, so it's still young. That's that's why I said in the beginning, there are particle physics in Brazil and it's just a baby, and even in Latin America, it's just a baby. There are very few people working on particle physics, especially in connection to dark matter. So that said, to me honestly, I think the only way how you know, we can really promote particle physics in Brazil and in Latin America is by organizing, promoting events, both at the undergrad level at, and for high school students. To me, that's the only way how you can really uh, have increased the flux of students interested, engaged, really, on astroparticle physics. Because then you pick, pick them up from early on in their careers. And that's, that's, to me, that's irrelevant. Because if you have a massive student, most of the time they already made up their mind about the research they, they want to be uh, working on. The end might be a, diff a field completely different than yours, than ours, right? Mm -hmm. So to me, that's a way how we can promote us part of physics. Fortunately, Roger Josefeld uh, is one of the persons behind the this astroparticle physics community that was created. And that's one of the ways how we can also promote astroparticle physics in Brazil and Latin America. But we have to be really aware that it's, it's, it's still a baby. It's a, a field that's growing in Brazil and growing in Latin America is slowly because it started, let's say, nine years, 10 years ago, for real, related to dark matter. Related to dark matter nine years ago. It's not much, right? But Hopefully, we within you know a, a time scale of one decade or two decades, this will be uh, instead of a baby, a well-established line of research, both in Brazil, in Brazil and in Latin America. So that's all I had to say, and thank you so much for listening to me, to me one more time. And just to finalize, sorry, one few sentences before I forget. I'm gonna list here at the end just some of the events that we have organized in Brazil or in Latin America, okay? Or some of the events that we organized uh, abroad, okay? As Latin Americans. 
So there was this one was organized by Fabio Yoko, uh, was a school on dark metal workshop and the training workshop by Matthew Macro, sorry. There was a South American dark matter workshop organized by Fabio Yoko in 2018. There was a South American dark matter, uh, South American workshop on cosmology, uh, I think was organized by Roger Rosenfeld. There was another South American dark matter workshop organized by Fabio Yoko and Ivoni and, and Enrico Bertuzzo. And then 2018, that's when I arrived. And then I, I started organizing those events because they were uh, before, around the time when Fabio Yoko was, uh, was gonna leave Brazil. And then I, I, I started organizing those events at ICTP Safer. And then organized a school in astroparticle physics uh, workshop, dark universe workshop in 2019, uh, another event uh, on in 2021, another event 2022. There were a couple of schools they organized in Natal related to astroparticle physics or dark matter. We were involved as Latin Americans. We were involved in the Pascal's conference, which is really big, also in the Wind conference in the US. And so Latin Americans be involved in the organization of these really big events in astroparticle physics. That's the starting, I, to me, it's the sign that we are now being, becoming relevant to the international community as a whole, right? We had also uh, other people joining these dark matter uh, workshop, which is also dark universe workshop, which is really big such as uh, Ricardo Sturani was one, one of the guys who were organizing these events. We organized a, a couple of three schools related to astroparticle physics and dark matter to these devoted to high school students. To me, that's the way how we, it should go. And we had also obviously schools on high energy astrophysics. There are many, I'm not gonna go through all of them. As you can see, there's a whole list of events right here and some of the other events right there. I'm not gonna read them all, but just to show you that uh, we started, okay? So it's young, less than 10 years of existence, uh, this field of related to dark matter, but it's, it's going and it's growing fast now through those events, not just these high level scientific events, but through events where we really try to target those undergrad students and high school students. Because then once they enter the university, this, what I want to do, I wanted to do something related to particle physics and astronomy. And you combine them both, you get astroparticle physics. So that's all I had to say. Thank you so much for listening to me and sorry for taking so long. Bye.